There are clouds of gas called nebula scattered throughout all galaxies, including our own galaxy. These nebula, these clouds, are the birthplace of stars. A star will start to form in a region of higher density within the gas cloud. This could be caused by a huge explosion of a star at the end of its life in a supernova. The gravitational attraction of this higher density region pulls the gas and dust together. The kinetic energy of the falling particles is converted to heat on impact. A region of condensing matter will begin to heat up and start to glow, forming a protostar. If enough gas and dust falls in and the protostar contains enough matter, the central temperature will reach 15 million degrees centigrade. That's hot enough for nuclear reactions to start. In these, hydrogen fuses together to form helium. The star begins to release energy. This thermal activity prevents the star from contracting any further and causes it to shine. It becomes a main sequence star. A star of one solar mass, that is the same size as our Sun, will remain in the main sequence for about 10 billion years until almost all of the hydrogen has been fused to form helium. That's about 90% of its whole life. The core of the star, now almost all helium, begins to contract and the outer layers begin to expand. They cool as they expand and shine less brightly. The expanding star is now called a red giant. In about 5 billion years, when this sun enters this part of its life, it will expand to a very large radius, a radius of about one astronomical unit. In other words, its surface will expand almost out to the Earth. After perhaps a few hundred million years, the helium core will run out. The outer layers of gas drift away from the core as a gaseous shell. This gas that surrounds the core is called a planetary nebula. The remaining core, that's about 80% of the original star, is now in its final stages. The core becomes a white dwarf. The star eventually cools and dims, becoming a red and then eventually a black dwarf. The definition of what is a massive star is not very precise. It applies to those stars which have a mass of about three times greater than that of our Sun, but some are up to 50 or even 100 times greater in mass. Massive stars evolve in the same way as smaller stars, only accumulating a very large amount of mass. Because the star is so big, the internal pressure and temperatures are so high that the star burns very brightly. The hydrogen fuel fuses very much more quickly, so that the lifetime of a massive star may be measured only in millions of years rather than the billions of a smaller star such as our Sun. The temperature is so much higher that the light it emits is pushed towards the blue end of the spectrum, particularly when photographed, the star looks blue. When all of the hydrogen is fused into helium, the massive star then becomes a red supergiant and starts off with a helium core surrounded by a shell of cooling, expanding gas. In the next million years or so, a series of fusion reactions will continue in the core, forming new elements up to the atomic number of iron. As this fuel is exhausted, under intense pressure, the electrons will be driven into protons. The core collapses at a fantastic speed, causing a massive explosion called a supernova. The shock waves will blow away the outer layers of the star and for a short time the star will outshine the whole of the rest of the galaxy. It is in these brief moments that heavier elements may be formed, those with an atomic number greater than that of iron. Most of the matter of the star is blown away by this supernova explosion, forming a nebula, an example being the Crab Nebula. If the core survives the explosion, and it's between one and a half to three times the solar masses, it's likely to contract to become a very tiny, dense star called a neutron star. The density of this material is enormous. It's equivalent, for example, to the mass of a Boeing 707 compressed into the size of a grain of sand. The whole Earth, if compressed into that sort of density, would fit comfortably inside a football stadium. 
If the core is much greater than three solar masses, then its mass and density are such that it becomes a black hole. It is called a black hole because it is so massive and so dense that the gravitational pull will not even allow light to escape from the surface. Hence we can't see it, but we can see the effects of it. The spreading blast wave of the supernova might well cause the surrounding hydrogen gas to begin to clump and start the formation of a new star, a new protostar. The heavier elements of the spreading nebula may allow the formation of rocky planets, such as those in our own solar system, from Mercury outwards to Mars. The phrase that you sometimes hear, that we are all stardust, is literally true. All of the heavier elements of the Earth and within us must at one time have been formed in a supernova.